today, just to be clear, my talk is not for all the tech companies that are based in Korea、um, or anywhere in the world. My talk is really for people who don't work at a tech first company. You know,、um, my talk is for people who are doing just as equally fascinating things and dealing with just as complex challenges, but they're not in a sector that's known as just IT. This is a fish, and this fish has found a rock, a, a clam, and it's hitting against the rock as many times as possible to figure out how does it break open the clam to eat the food. And when I saw this, it really struck me in this moment because I thought, you know, we're all kind of like this fish. We all want to choose the right tool to get the job done, and we want to find the right solutions. And that this tusk fish, this fish, hopes to, you know, have chosen the right clam, the right rock, and the right angle. And like the like this fish, we want to make sure that we also can choose the right tools to make the right decisions. And right now, organizations all around the world are saying that that tool is digital, from dashboards to analytics to big data to artificial intelligence. All of these things are based in data, and all of these things are digital. And supposedly, all of these tools will now help us make radically better decisions—decisions decisions that will help our companies grow, decisions that ensure that organizations can meet customer needs. Now, in most companies. This whole process is called digital transformation. How do you prove that you can say we got this piece of data and now this means our business went up? It's not an easy thing to do. Everyone talks about it, but people are struggling at it. And I think part of that struggle comes from a very simple equation that can be told with emojis:、um, is that most people think that digital transformation is just mostly a technical endeavor. It's like, oh, we just need to get all that data in one place. And then once we throw some technology on it, we'll just get some computers, and we'll get a data lake. We'll put everything, you know, we'll get make sure we're all Hadoop out, and we're no longer in spreadsheets. And ta-da, we're going to make better decisions. <laughs> and this is the formula that is in most leaders' heads. And I think this is the problem. And what I'm here to tell you is that it's not that simple. You know, the reality is that to get the ROI, the actual return on your investment of technology. You actually need to actually engage on a much larger, much larger thing, which is all around digital transformation. And here's, you know, one of the case studies I love to share. You know, does、um, Tesco is UK's largest supermarket chain. So Tesco is the was was the poster child of big data, and then their big data strategy totally went wrong, and their business suffered a big loss. And now they're the poster child. Of big data gone wrong, and I want to explain how this happened. You know, Tesco had invested so much in big data; they were able to use their club card to offer personalized pricing for every shopper based on their past purchasing behavior. So they figured that well, consumers, you know, now are used to variable pricing with Uber, with Amazon. You know, services that say one day the price is this, and another day the price is this, or one hour the car, the taxi will cost this much, but during rush hour it's going to cost this much. So they said, "Well, we have all this data from how people have shopped over the last ten years. We have everything now in one place in the data lake, and now we can just offer people personalized pricing. So now we're going to say, 'Hey, you, you're going to pay a banana. This is how much you pay for a banana, and you, you're going to pay a different price for a banana based on what we know about you. How does that make you feel to know that you're going to be paying a different price for a banana than your neighbor or your friend based on how much you make?" Based on what, how many times you shop there, how does that make you feel when you hear about that? Right, probably not too great. I see some shakes, you know, and head nods in the audience, and that was a problem because British people also felt the same way. They're the same as Koreans and anyone else around the world. Is we want to have fair pricing, and customers didn't want personalized pricing. They said, "I want to know I'm paying the same price for a banana as my neighbor." And so, a reporter for the Telegraph in a Harvard Business Review article, when they did interviews, they said, "Look, shoppers are now questioning whether loyalty cards, such as Club Card, are more helpful to the supermarket than they are to the shopper." And what happened is that customers lost trust with Tesco, and they turned to other stores. You know, a year after the loyalty Club Card program started in 2013, Tesco stock prices fell. So this is when their big data Club Card program started. Then in 2014, prices fell. Warren Buffett sells all, all of his shares, 
and their stock prices continue to suffer, you know, and they suffer to this day. In 2016, they lost 6.4 billion pounds, which is one of the largest losses on the UK market. And that's how much it is. <laughs> so that's like a lot of money. And the thing is, here's the thing. Tesco invested a lot in innovation. You know, Tesco was digital before digital was cool. That was what the, what the HBR article said. You know, they had a lot of data. They could optimize their model, but they couldn't see how their model was fundamentally company centric and not customer centric. So all that money that Tesco had invested in big data had just taken them farther away from understanding their customers. And so here's an example. Um, has anyone ever eaten at Domino's Pizza in the United States? Has anyone done that? Okay, so yes, my example will be familiar. This is a great case study of a company has done a great job at customer centric, uh, you know, digital transformation and they're being digital. So back in 2014, Domino's was just like any other pizza company. They weren't doing that great. It was fast food chain. They had nothing digital. It was all brick and mortar stores, all physical stores. You had to walk into a Domino's to order a pizza or you had to call them. That was the only way. Then in 2008, they were like, we're going to invest in digital. They created a website called a pizza tracker where you can order your pizza and you can see at each step when the pizza will be delivered. So it was investing in transparency. Then in 2011, they said, we're going to make an app so you can order your pizza through our iPhone or through any kind of phone. And then in 2016, they introduced a thing called zero click ordering. So if you just pick up your phone in eight seconds, the pizza will be ordered. You don't have to click anything. In 2016, they tried out drone delivery. In 2018, they have AR ordering. The point is, is that Domino's stock price has increased. And if you look at the growth compared to tech companies, they have outperformed tech giants like Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google. This is amazing, but no one ever talks about it. Because app, because Domino's, would you think a pizza company is a tech company? No, it's a non-tech company using technology that's doing better on the stock market than tech companies. But they succeeded not because of technology alone. And this is what I want to be able to explain to you, is that they didn't just say, oh, we're going to adopt technology. They didn't just treat digital transformation as a technical process. They treated it as an organizational process. They focus on getting people to collaborate and to create new ways of working. Here's a quote from a, a Harvard Business Review article on the study. They said, it's a long quote, but I think it's important to understand. Executive support for the company's digital transformation ensured that the newly empowered IT departments and their marketing counterparts were able to collaborate in a quick iterative process. So what does that mean? That actually means that you know, data and insights was used as a connective tissue in this example between IT and sales and marketing. And there's, it's more complex. There's also supply chain because they had to, you know, measure each ingredient and how fast. There's also delivery and transportation, right? But the point is, is that data was used to connect to everybody. It wasn't used as a silo and it brought everybody closer. And it wasn't just about data. It was also about insights. Because what they had to understand first was about the customer. They built the technology based on the customer needs. They didn't just say, oh, we're going to now do all this technology. They said, we first have to understand what customers really want. And that's what digital transformation is, because they did it in a customer centric way. And that's why they succeeded in making sure their stock even outperformed other tech companies. And so if you really want to be doing, you know, being digital and you don't want to do digital, the big lesson here is that we, we can actually get to better decisions if we just stop, you know, thinking that we just need more data. But we actually just think, well, if we can be digital, we'll be doing it for the purposes of customer centricity. The World Knowledge Forum.